And so this equation here is saying you've got some true object f of x, y, fun 2D continuous function. And what you do is consider it in some rotating coordinate system. And uh, all we're doing is just integrating along the axis L and preserving the position S from the center of the field of view. And that's going to give us some projection value M for a fixed angle phi. And again, we retain a distance S. Okay, so we're just doing a summation along one direction of our true object, okay? It's just collecting, summing the values along the line. Radon transform, X-ray transform. So there I'm visualizing it there with rotating arrows to show that if we forward project, we end up with a sinogram. And I showed you in the last lecture how to get a sinogram count by count by count for PET imaging. There I've shown it to you directly as an analytic model of line intercourse. Okay, um, so there's a, an example of a true object. If we forward project it using the radon transform, we'll get a sinogram. That's the formula for the radon transform or 2D X-ray transform. And then as you know, we can back project our data. And if we just back project it, then that's the convolution model that we've been talking about at length. Um, and in reality, we have limited counts in our sinogram. So what I did there was I just did a Poisson sample of that. Um, or you can do more accurately what I showed you in the last lecture, which was point by point, back to back photon pairs in PET, collecting them in the sinogram domain and back projecting them. So you've seen this in the last lecture. I'm just showing it again. This time, though, I'm linking them directly with the convolution integral for the back projected image and with the 2D X-ray transform or radon transform for the sinogram domain, or two different domains. Okay, so now let's get, we've, we've dealt with at length how to filter a back projected image and get a reconstruction. How do we do it with sinograms? So I'm gonna cover very quickly what's called the central section theorem, which is at the core of filter back projection. So there again is our 2D object defined in a 2D um, coordinate system, LS, and we're taking line intervals to get M phi S. We've already shown you that picture. There is a sinogram with the coordinate S and the angle phi, so we're just collecting parallel projections. Then what I can do is take a Fourier transform of M phi S. So M phi S is a fixed phi, fixed value of phi, we've got a 1D function of s, so m phi s. The definition of the Fourier transform is that we multiply it by the complex exponential that we want to find the coefficient for. So if we want to find the coefficient capital M for spatial frequency k, then we multiply m of s with exponential minus i k s. Um, and once you have the multiplication, you sum it all up, gives you the amount of that frequency that's present in that row of the sinogram, that projection. Okay. Then what I've done is I've just substituted the definition of M phi S back into that formula. Okay, is so everybody okay with that? That's the definition of M phi S is equal to the integral of FLS DL. That's the definition of the Fourier transform. I should have these equations on the screen at the same time. Sorry about that. That's the definition of the Fourier transform of M phi S. If I substitute M phi S equal to integral FLS DL back in, that is my description of the 1D Fourier transform of one row of a sinogram. And by the way, again, if there are any MR enthusiasts out there, what I'm talking about here would actually correspond to a radial case space sampling trajectory. So again, just like I linked BPF, of interest to MR people. This is also of interest to MR people, not just PET and CT and SPECT people. Right, so that's on the right hand side dealing with the sinogram. On the left hand side, I'm just writing down, you know, FLS is what we want, M phi, the sinogram, is what we have. 
So I've just written a description on the right hand side of a Fourier transform of one row of the sinogram. On the left side, I've just written down the definition of the 2D Fourier transform of what we want, FLS. That's what we want. Okay, so that's case space for MR people. Okay, 2D Fourier transform, set of coefficients for 2D spatial frequencies. Again, often get a peak in the middle of the low spatial frequencies, and then we're dropping off by the reading of the vessel level again. Um, okay, so right hand side, Fourier transform of data, left hand side, Fourier transform of what we want. So, any observations if you look at those two expressions at the top? So, what would we have to do to the thing on the left to get the thing on the right? Bearing in mind that we're integrating over dl. So on the left hand side, if kl equals zero, then we get complete equality between the two expressions. So, that tells us that a Fourier transform of one row of a sinogram is equal to a profile through the 2D Fourier transform of what we want. So let me show you that. So there we go. We've correctly locked on to those expressions and we've correctly spotted that if KL is equal to zero, so the 1D Fourier transform of that guy there corresponds to the profile through the 2D case space. And then when I go to a different projection at a different angle phi, that corresponds to rotating my LS system, that each of the different azimuthal viewing angles for the projections, when I Fourier transform them, correspond to different angles of profiles through my 2D K space. And so as I collect more and more projection angles, so I populate more and more profiles through the 2D K space, which basically says, if I can normalize those various contributions, as long as they all bunch up in the middle, every single projection offers me, should be no surprise, right? Every single projection offers an estimate of the center of k-space. And the center of k-space is kl, ks is equal to zero. And that's the zero frequency, which is the global offset. And so, of course, every projection is going to have that global offset included. Um, so I've got to normalize for the increased sampling density in the middle and the sparser sampling density towards the edge. And the distribution here is a 1 over, kind of a 1 over kr, I guess I should say. But just loosely speaking, it's a 1 over r, 1 over, 1 over absolute k, I think I prefer. Because then you can correct it by multiplying by the absolute value of k, which is known as a ramp filter. It just compensates for that drop-off in sample density of the 2D k space. So if I can compensate, because notice if I don't do that compensation, if I just inverse Fourier transform that, I will get my blurred back projected image. Okay. But what this, what this tells us is that if you just naively do that with no filtering, with no compensation, you'll just get a back-projected image. Whereas if I can compensate for the sampling density, then I will get a proper estimate of my 2D case space of my object that I'm trying to reconstruct, FLS. Okay. Um, and the reality on the ground that what people end up doing is linearity affords all kinds of... Uh, simple re-manipulations. What we end up doing is taking a 1D Fourier transform of each sinogram, applying a one-dimensional ramp filter, suppressing the zero frequencies, amplifying the high frequencies, inverse Fourier transform, then back project, and that gives you a reconstructed image. So that's an alternative schematic. 1D parallel projection, Fourier transform of that equals to uh, a central, that's why I call it the central section theorem, it's equal to a central section through the 2D case space. So very useful not just for PET, also for CT, filter back projection, and also of interest, I dare say, for radial trajectories in MR acquisitions as well. Okay? 
Um, so here I've got a projection line integrals through my object. That's the radon transform there, 2D X-ray transform. Then, of course, if we Fourier transform that, well, you know, this could be viewed as a Fourier synthesis, which means that is composed of a linear superposition, okay, tautology. It's just a superposition of sinusoidal functions of varying amplitudes, and the amplitudes of those guys are none other than the than the 1D Fourier transform of that projection, because the Fourier transform Fourier analysis tells us what the coefficients of each of those sinusoids are, and so. That's the definition of the 1D for a transform, which is equal to that profile through case space. And then that just corresponds to the KL equals zero um, part of the 2D case space, which would look like that in terms of 2D spatial frequencies, which makes all the sense in the world, yeah, because we've done mining rules along here, and so these, co these coefficients, these sinusoidal functions actually correspond to those ones. Plain obvious. KL equals zero means zero frequency is flat in that direction. Okay. So that's just a re-expression of the central section theorem in graphics. I don't know if I've got another equation. Oh, no, I do. Yeah, there you go. So just showing that um, the coefficients of the 2D spatial frequencies, there are the 2D spatial frequencies, are equal to the coefficients of those 1D spatial frequencies. Okay. But anyway, I hope you hope you get the idea. Um, and there's the complete 2D case space. And obviously, we collect projections at all the angles, and so that's how we populate all of case space. And so you should intuitively see, isn't that a beautifully simple understanding of the 2D Fourier transform? Those sinusoids, you just rotate them all the way around, add them all together, and that gives you. I mean, that for me. In fact, I'm only just realising that as I'm speaking with you now that this is an unbelievably simple way of understanding the components of a 2D Fourier transform. I'm showing three of them there. If we filled up all of them, you'd have the kind of more or less stripy lines here. All the way over there, you'd have the kind of undulating, very broad functions, but all at that fixed angle. That all you have to do is just rotate all the way around, just rotate them all, add them all together, special coefficients, and it gives you the object. This is inspiring me to do a 2D version of, I've got a 1D for a transform MATLAB thing where I add up all the coefficients and reconstruct any function you like. I think it would be really nice to do it in 2D because you'll get these beautiful rotating sinusoids. Right. Okay, so field of back projection, uh, for a transform each parallel projection, apply a random filter, inverse for a transform back project. And if you do with MATLAB, MATLAB already has a, an I radon inverse radon function, which you'll be using on Thursday. Um, if you do that, you get field spread projection results that looks like the one there. Um, there's an example of field spread projection for real pet data, just to show that it does work in real life. And there is my back project then filter reconstruction. And they should be more or less the same, although my back project then filter has the clipping problem that we talked about. Um, so it's not quite a perfect reconstruction. But they are both least squares estimators. And, and if you have a perfect geometry um, with no blurring effects other than just the back projection effects, then they should be mathematically identical. It's just where you, linearity and, uh, and and the staging of where you do things. So you do the filtering either in the projection domain or you can do the filtering in the image domain. Okay. 